All right. Well, good morning, everybody. It's uh, just a couple of minutes after 8 a.m. It is Tuesday, May 31st, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, we're here for uh, the Energy for Alaska Task Force meeting uh, and here to continue walking through the uh, latest draft of the FNSB SEDS. Um, and I, as I told the group uh, just before we were getting started, I think really the most important item for me is that we walk through these strategies um, and actions and, you know, and basically, and really who's in lead, who's in support, who's been identified. Uh, particularly regarding this group, uh, really what it is, is it just makes life easier working with the F and SB. If I can point back to the SEDs to justify whatever action we're doing, which is not to say that I don't do things or we don't do things that, you know, aren't, you know, we, we don't, we don't work for the borough. Um, and they don't command our actions, our activities, uh, but again, it just makes it easier. And so we wanna make sure that uh, the different groups that are supposed to, you know, that we think uh, might be good in leader support for these different actions are identified, uh, that we have a complete set of actions as far as we can tell, um, moving forward uh, for the next five years, recognizing that uh, it is the intention of both FEDC and the FNSB to come back more regularly take a look at this document and see how we're progressing, which is to say on a yearly basis, come do a re-review of this as essentially a mini sets process uh, so that we can make necessary course corrections um, and then to make sure we're getting where we'd like our community and our state to go. Sounds good? All right. Well, let's go ahead and just jump right in it. Uh, so we had started by walking through the energy section. Uh, we got much of the way through it. Uh, but I did want to just do a quick review uh, right at the very top regarding the energy strategy. Strategy number one regards uh, natural gas, expanding natural gas um, service across our community. Yes, Mr. Music. Yes, uh, I, I really haven't taken uh, enough time to study this document, but I have read through it a couple of times. And I don't see any at least I don't see enough emphasis on climate change. And I think that we should uh, bear in mind that initially, at least it was my understanding that we were looking at natural gas as an interim um, fuel to keep the lights on and stay warm. And uh, that uh, we'd looking long-term at something renewable, say hydro, geothermal, wind, solar, and you know, all the lists, pumped hydro, uh, because we're killing ourselves and we're killing the planet and we're making uh, people unhealthy in what they call the, now the, uh, used to be the triangle of death, now it's the polygon of death, that as it, 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 it spills out of North Pole and moves into Fairbanks. Uh, the bad air quality that comes from burning anything in our airshed really should trouble everyone on this uh, uh, call. It's uh, now I, I understand we'll have fossil fuels far into the future, but I think that sooner rather than later, we should be looking at fossil fuels as backup to renewables. I've said my two bits. Okay. Well, I tell you what, Mike, I, uh, I guess, first of all, we're in a double pickle. The first pickle is the fact that it's hydrocarbons that, that really do drive the state budget. Um, they're the, they're you know, still uh, a major component of, of the dollars in the state's treasury. Um, so that's the first thing. Uh, now, it does look like, I mean, there's quite a bit of it in here, Mike, as far as supporting the transition. Um, but again, that's a... Climate change is another one of those things that is not uh, highlighted within this document. Um, it has been communicated to the contractors. Another thing that's not specifically highlighted is the military, even though it makes up a third of our economy. Um, another thing that's not highlighted are seniors, which are a major component, uh, both of our population base and again, and our economy. So I will make a note um, Without objection, I will make a note relative to climate change. Um, it doesn't, I, you, I agree that it doesn't, I don't recall higher up in the document it getting um, any kind of real highlighting as a driver for a need for transition. 
Jomo, this is Kathy. Where can I download this document? Sure. Uh, you can go to the FNSB website. In fact, if you, I want to say if you Google FNSB SEDS, C E D S, which is what I did. C E D S? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And Jomo, this is uh, Rick Soley. Um, appreciate uh, Mike uh, Music's um, comments, um, uh, though I would agree on some factual basis. That is, we are observing uh, changes in temperatures and things like that that are measurable. Um, I would have a different set of conclusions about actions that we should take <clears throat> either as a borough as a, or as FEDC, um, because my view on on climate change in general, and it's um, is different than Mike's, and so um, I guess I I don't really agree with Mike's conclusions. Uh, and we did not start uh, natural gas in Fairbanks, I don't think, as a bridge. Um, I think it was to uh, try to uh, clean up the air and bring our cost of energy down. So that that's my perspective. Okay, I mean, I would tell you just as a Jomo Stewart, John Q. Citizen, on a strategic basis. Um, I've, I've kind of looked at hydrocarbons as something that we should be exporting, um, again, to pump the state treasury while we transition to renewables, but, uh, particularly if we can have them at a lower cost, lower cost, more stably priced as a groundwork for our economy, as well as something for which we might take a lead in innovation and utilization. But that's just Jomo talking. Okay. Well, I've put on the note. Let's just go ahead and start doing a walkthrough again, as far as things that I saw uh, that for which I made comment. Uh, right at the top, regarding natural gas, um, you'll see letter E support long term planning natural gas pipeline with a Fairbanks connector. We talked about this last week. I believe that we should add a note. Um, that it should be structurally and financially integrated with the large pipeline so that Fairbanks isn't in a position where 100,000 people are trying to support tens of millions of dollars of infrastructure as we try to grow a system. I think it would be, for all that Frank says, I'm, I believe it would be cost prohibitive. Any objection? Okay. Also regarding natural gas, and I'm actually gonna make this correction now. Again, I think it should be a major activity to acquire IGU's owed tax credit. It for sure is eligible for $15 million relative to the large 5.25 million gallon storage tank down on South Side. It is possible that it might qualify for the North Pole satellite facility, which I believe would be another 6 million. At any rate, um, getting those taxes returned to IGU so that it can continue its operations on something other than loan money, I would think it should be a major enterprise and a focus of our interior delegation. Any objection? Carl, that would be in your wheelhouse. I don't speak for IGU. I understand, Jumbo. Yeah, I'm in uh, just observing this. I'm not a decision maker, but I will address it. Okay. All right. And now we're getting to the place that's near and dear to your heart that you were speaking of, uh, Mike. So the next section of strategy two is regards energy innovation. Promote, uh, promote Interior Alaska as a site for energy innovation. Uh, action A. Uh, support installation of the micro reactor. Lead, of course, is DOD. We do have listed GVA, Department of Energy, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, uh, but I don't know if we should also be adding AEA and ASEP. ASEP has been one of the major uh, information drivers relative to small scale and micro nuclear. Without objection. I guess the a question I see that Ms. Smart is on the line, should we 
Should we restrain the urge to task other groups other than ourselves, or should we just uh, consider these recommendations? Yeah, I would expect the groups to provide those comments. And I know um, Gwen has been involved in some of the conversations, so um, I would limit it to yourselves. Limit to ourselves, okay. All right, then we will we'll let ASEP throw their hand up. Okay. I did add, let's see, so uh, support microgrid research. The gang's all there. Uh, support other pilot projects that advance and test new technologies in the interior. I did add FEDC, uh, that is within, that's one of the things we do do, uh, as well as TCC. As a representative organization of groups that uh, very much need uh, innovation, uh, especially if it leads to, to greater reliability, greater access, and lower cost. I've made no, I did add FEDC also to expand weatherization and energy efficiency initiatives. Um, as I've stated before, I've been pushing hard. There was plenty of federal money. A lot of federal money has come down relative to weatherization and energy efficiency, but those funds uh, tend to be prioritized by uh, for deployment, where I have been pushing on uh, re-upping the energy retrofit and rebate program formerly uh, in operation under AHFC because it was open to all homeowners regardless of status or income. And by status, I mean things like senior citizen or income challenged. Didn't make it over the finish line, but we'll keep working on it. Okay, any comments on that? For EV vehicles, uh, again, looks like they had the right suite of folks. Okay, explore and invest in carbon capture and reduction technologies. And I've added FEDC as a support. I don't know if anyone remembers, but uh, many years ago, working from a proposal from this task force uh, regarding biomass to energy, um, and finding that uh, those technologies were not commercially available and expanding it to include biomass, natural gas, and coal. Uh, the next step was we had requested and actually achieved $10 million of funding to study carbon capture technology um, and possible sequestration um, research. Uh, unfortunately, that money got diffused, uh, but we still have an interest in it. And also, if you speak to guys like Bernie Carl and Steve Hagenson, um, ideas about what uh, uses, possible uses for the captured carbon, which depending on how it uh, is captured and the kind of effluent stream can actually be pharmaceutical grade and used for other things. Okay, any comments? You guys are so quiet. Okay, support research and implementation of value added uses for energy sources such as coal and waste heat. So that kind of blends with the last one. And again, it seems to have all the right folks except for possibly AEA. But I have added FEDC. Okay, resilient power grid. Now, this may be where you're thinking, Mike. Again, climate change is not specifically spoken of much within the document but it's reflective across the document, I think. And again, when you were talking about resiliency of the grid, so much of this is a hardening or being accommodative of uh, the, the changing environment, as well as our changing use uh, needs and our changing availability of technologies to satisfy those needs. Okay, any comments on this? Again, we've got uh, additional megawatt batteries. There was just a story in the newspaper on that. Um, upgrade existing uh, transmission lines. The one thing I did see is glaring, I mentioned this last time, was they had spoken of the road belt intertie and yet described the rail belt system. And so I made a clarifying, a clarifying note um, that when they're talking about the road belt, and that includes the Denali Commission, they're talking about the Eastern electrical lines that would run up the Glen Highway over to Glen Allen and Delta Junction, essentially completing a, a circle around the northern tier. Okay. 
plan for renewables. Okay, action A would be supporting things like geothermal projects. I've added FEDC. Again, this is something we'll want to talk about here at the task force, as well as wind energy, as well as, uh, again, things like Bradley Lake and possibly larger scale projects. I did add a note to say add Susitna or strike Bradley. So it just uh, would encompass uh, either both of the known large potential projects um, or uh, just hydro, excuse me, hydroelectric generally. And then finally, continue to expand and encourage participation in GBA SNAP program, which I consider uh, just really more than GBA's wheelhouse. Mike? Yeah, uh, more recently, I've heard that Watana was uh, perhaps more likely to be built than the uh, Susitna. Uh, do you want to distinguish between the two? I could. Let's see. Or does anyone have better information than that? They're usually either hyphenated. So I'll just add Susitna and Watana. It's, it Susitna seems is the catch all. Okay, thank you. Yes, uh, it seems to me that uh, as, the, uh, as the dam gets taller and more expensive, then uh, it gravitated toward the Susitna size uh, versus the Watana size, which was considerably smaller, as I recall. Part of the tension inherent in this document, at least to me, is, is how big are you willing to let yourself dream? I mean, on an economic basis, something like a Watana. Um, whoops, did I lose everybody? Ah, something like a Watana. Um, when they talk about things like distributed hydro, you know, the tension is you, you it's a smaller, easier lift on an upfront capital basis, but you're kilowatts cost more on the back end, whereas a Susitna Watana or even the larger expanded Bradley have a larger upfront capital cost, so a heavier lift on the front end, but lower cost on the back end. Okay. Jomo, uh, this is Rick. A um, couple comments on the... Um, on this section renewables um, and maybe it's, I think your bullets are good and they capture well, kind of the general um, general themes, but for example, in both um, Bradley and on um, a solar, kind of some things ongoing now that we, and on uh, uh, grid resiliency, all three of those, some incremental progress. Uh, with regard to Bradley, of course, there's um, one project approved to raise a dam, another one that's um, being um, being looked at to do that further, which would, of course, increase uh, hydro <clears throat> hydropower off of Bradley. Uh, just last week, uh, the announcement of the uh, upgrade funds for the inner tie um, occurred. And, uh, you know, so that's and that's something been it's in your document here but that's actually kind of a milestone. And then thirdly, the uh, community solar is uh, getting legs now and we hope will emerge um, uh, kind of to take the next step in kind of solarizing Fairbanks um, from a Golden Valley standpoint. Those are just three, maybe they're more milestones, but um, yeah, I, I think your bullets well capture a lot of this. The only thing I thought I saw that seemed like it might be missing that we might give a shout out to was uh, was it ground source heat pumps. I hadn't um, quite understood them, um, but it, it looks like it, it does have potential. And I just don't know where that might fit in. It, it's certainly something that should be in the smart guys drawing boards, you know, um, it's it's not kind of in in my world of moving into technology that we can harness um, at a scale that you know I that that I can sort of grab onto, but but it's being looked at and it should be. And if, if we need to call it out in this document to support that, we should. I look back through. I thought I made a comment on it somewhere. Well, while you're looking, uh, Jomo, uh, air source heat pumps are being tested and uh, proved to be quite efficient here, even in the interior and further north. So 
I, I think I heard you say ground source. I did say ground source, but yeah, ground source, air source, just heat pumps. Uh, ground source we know works well, but it costs many, many more times than just a simple air source heat pump. Okay, I'm gonna make another note on that. Do you think maybe that should go under the energy innovation section? I'll just make, a, I'm just gonna make a quick note. Okay. All right, Groovy. Okay, and now increase collaboration, or rather, should uh, so again we've hit hydro, geothermal, solar, as well as conventional, and then finally increase collaboration. So convene utilities. They have AEA. We help pull together a group relative to the SEDS. It actually was quite the group. Um, it was the first time I'd ever been in a room with all the major energy tops. Um, and they talked about getting back together on a more regular basis just to, again, there's a lot of things for which they can't or won't align. A lot of stuff they need to keep under the, the vest, um, but there's a lot of stuff but then on a strategic basis that they can find alignment on. Um, and, and by that, I meant it was Dan Britton, John Burns. Um, yeah, it was, it was a pretty great group. So we've got, they got AEA. I went ahead and put FEDC in. We're already in support. Um, but as far as bringing together the local guys and gals to discuss a local energy issues, um, AEA may not be the most appropriate convener. So I thought I'd add us in. Uh, encourage greater Department of Defense participation in regional energy planning. I'm okay with us uh, being in tandem with the FED or excuse me, the FNSB. We are. Uh, encourage regional stakeholder participation, nuclear energy working group. I went ahead and put us in in support. Uh, key participation in conversations uh, with the rail belt partners. Again, I thought FNSB and FEDC. Again, as far as working on the local, the northern end, we're just assisting. Um, and then work with education and workforce development providers. And I just went ahead and added FEDC and again, TCC, both of whom have an interest. So that brings us to the bottom of those strategies and actions. Any further comments? Anything we feel like we've missed? Okay, well, let's zip through forestry. Now, I, uh, I, again, I brought it before this group uh, because again, our interest is mostly uh, forest wood products and we started this conversation with combustion causes effluence, uh, but wood, wood for heat and energy. Um, and trying to find a way to, that we can tap into that renewable resource in a way that's cleaner. But in any case, again, collaborative management, it was really down here at the local wood products where I had one comment. Uh, local wood products develop and promote local wood products. They speak of furniture manufacturing. I will tell you when FEDC first got engaged with the forestry subject, it was actually relative to things like furniture. Uh, we were trying to see if we could make, um, help make birch the new bamboo. For which we still have, uh, you know, laminate samples. We can show you when you get here. I like trotting them out. But really uh, most of the wood has is, is gone more to energy. Uh, uh, but I've added, potentially adding home construction framing kits and dimensional lumber capacity. We found the vulnerability of our community, even though we're sitting here on an island, you know, we're an island in the sea of trees, when there were those supplies disruptions last year and the year before in the construction industry. Any thoughts? Okay. There at the bottom, the one thing I saw, the very last line, the second to the last line, E, increase sawmills in the region by providing education and training for sawmill operators, construction of a directory of local sawmills. And it was this last one that caught me, the establishment of a community sawmill. My sensitivity on that is just the fact that we do have 
for-profit enterprises with commercial businesses providing those services. And I, we, we, as a rule, we, we try not to set up private entities that are gonna compete with public, excuse me, public entities that are com gonna compete and possibly harm the businesses of private entities. Thoughts? Okay, so either way, the, uh, my recommendation was simply to soften that language either to explore the pot, well, to explore the possibility of, rather than as a directive. Again, thinking of places like Northland Wood, Ward Wood, and perhaps encourage other private sector actors into that space. Okay, no one's objecting. <laughs> well, new message. Yeah, kiln as well. Now we do have the drying now. I'm not sure if it's appropriate for that kind of long form dimensional lumber. Rick? Well, I just, um, I'm slow to catch up. I agree with your your comment about the community um, community sawmill and just the uh, sensitivity on the private sector side. Those folks struggle to eke out a living and to have a viable operation. And I would be reluctant to encourage some kind of a process that might have government support to uh, to compete against them, um, whether it's the kiln that Isabelli started or the or the various uh, sawmills. So, well, as you recall, I mean, we advocated for the establishment of community wood kilns, but again, that was that's when there wasn't a private sector actor who had stepped up to provide that service. All right. And so as we move through that section, again, I just just note that I had uh, also embedded those comments down in the the actionable, so the operative sections down here in the strategies and actions. With by adding in a, and uh, adding, of course, FEDC at a minimum and support when it comes to uh, buy local wood programs. But that's what we do. OK. All right, Rick. You've been waiting, you've been patient. Here we are, mining. <laughs> My big addition to the mining section, um, I, I thought the mining objectives were solid. You know, Interior Alaska's abundant mineral resources, a mechanism uh, for supporting a, a thriving, responsive, modern mining industry. FNSB residents and local and regional leaders have an understanding of mining including the industry's economic importance, environmental stewardship, and employment opportunities. The third one I added uh, is Fairbanks being, uh, within five years, being on the path of being Alaska's center for critical and rare earth ore processing and refinement. Any thoughts? I guess maybe I should add, I thought it was kind of implicit. Let me go ahead and add, um, Mike. Yeah, I've got some thoughts. Of course, I live here in Esther and uh, we're a mining community. And uh, I'm wondering about the possibility of uh, developing mining plans in conjunction with communities so that uh, contemporary or future mining actually contributes uh, to the uh, oh, enhancement of what remains of historic mining to the extent perhaps that tailings could be uh, uh, distributed at a contour with uh, silt piling up behind that as that uh, basically restored these valleys out here that have uh, you know been the bread and butter of people that live here. Uh, but so is there a way to say perhaps uh, uh, not pay rail royalty to the state if they uh, went forward with a community plan 
or can something like that be worked out? I'm thinking about proposing that to our local miners. Uh, but, uh, how might that work into the sense here that contemporary mining helps repair uh, historic mining areas hmm. by offsetting the money that would otherwise go to the state? Essentially using the uh, some of the tailings from existing operating mines to for further reclamation of old mining areas. Yeah, these these claims out here are hundred years old or more, and so there have been work for that long. But uh, the old timers just left, and big holes are left in the ground. Can contemporary and future mining? Uh, work toward repairing that. Hmm. That's my question. Well, that's a good question. So, Rick. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, an interesting idea, Mike. Um, big idea, though, because what you, you, you're essentially suggesting that I guess we would redirect as a state monies that come in from uh, mining, whether it's through royalties or the mining license tax, or I guess potentially um, the borough, uh, within the borough, of course, they receive uh, property tax and, and redirecting those towards the uh, uh, rest restoration and, and um, reclamation of, of uh, mining lands. Um, and that's, um, yeah, that's an interesting idea. It's really about it's kind of almost an appropriation, it seems to me, um, because it's not a current mining activity that would go to do this. Fort Knox, of course, reclaimed grounds where they were that were, were, that were previous to them. Um, uh, so that does happen, but it's usually within the space of, a, of an operator that comes in. But uh, that's, um, as I say, it's an interesting idea. It's a big idea. Uh, one other thing I've noticed, too, is that uh, back in the 50s and 60s, uh, a lot of the big equipment was uh, electric. And uh, we had uh, probably the largest drag line in the world at the time, and it's electric. And uh, as is the one down in Healy. Uh, also, the uh, drag line was electric. The uh, Instead of trucks, they had conveyor belts that were electric that distributed the spoil uh, and overburden. And uh, so, and I've noticed too that it just happens to be totally in, at least plaster mining is totally in sync with solar. So I'm thinking about trying to promote to local miners to run their operation on solar and quit burning uh, carbon in our airsheds if possible. I think everything we can do to clean up our air is something that we should uh, incent people to do, incentivize people to do. Okay. Hmm. Well, I guess fundamentally, I'm, I'm looking through this, the higher level on these strategies and actions. So I've got workforce development, increased production, fair policies, and outreach. And I don't see anything speaking really of innovation. You could propose a new category. Yes, I suppose we could. What do we think, y'all? I think I think in innovation or or actually praxis, you know, an effectuation, because you know, when we look at all the different things. In, in this wish list, in a sense, and all the the plans and agencies and and the real world, the real world and real lives of all the people who will be doing the work, the people working in the offices, having kids, going through grief, whatever, over the next few years, five, 10 years, how all this can actually be effectuated is going to require some innovation. And so if we want to not have just outsiders come and tell us how to do it, then we have to do some of the responsibility and commit some of this process to figuring out how we can do this process better. So yeah, I'm all for putting something in there for innovation. 
Okay, I'm just gonna start putting notes. You know, others others are also calling it convergence or interdisciplinary. Right. There's a lot of this work all over the, the world and in the north that um, that we're trying to figure this stuff out. It isn't easy. It's mucky. Um, but if we care about each other and our kids, even if we're different, we, we have a lot of opportunity and a lot of work ahead of us. I'll, I'll clean up this, I swear. And that does bring up a good point. As you guys are looking through this, one of the specific things we are looking for is feedback on priorities. So not just what's important, what did we miss, but also um, what rises to the top? Thank you for the reminder. Um, I'm gonna lob this out there too, since we're doing it. You recall there was a, I guess this was probably about 10 or 15 years ago, more like 15, there was discussion of uh, potentially new ways of using mine tailings. Uh, they were doing, uh, what was it? It was innovative concrete configurations uh, that might use tailings as the aggregate um, and, and different base other than essentially quick lime uh, that both you could you know, use that old resource, um, but it would also entomb it. It would encase it. Um, basically, it would make it inert. And you could take mine tailings, if you use them as the aggregate within some of these innovative kinds of concretes, it made a really strong brick, um, had a longer, uh, they were testing it out at CCHRC, it had a wider season of use uh, because of the way it kicked off heat or just the, the way the chemical reaction happened and the final product was safe and inert. Um, okay, I'm gonna just lob that out. Okay, we'll give that some more thought. Um, at, uh, back to what uh, Brittany was saying. Um, Prioritization, material abundant more resources or mechanism. Okay, so just maintain the industry and advance it. Uh, a better public understanding of the value of mining and how we do it right, which supports the first. Uh, and then expanding it to new grounds beyond just precious metals. Now, down here on the strategies, it's prioritized by workforce development, increasing production, fair policies, and, and outreach. As you can see, I have added, again, value added. I, we did receive a note in the chat that refining can be a messy, messy business. Really, I just want to do, you know, preferably some level of value added processing here in the community. So I have stricken the full refinement, although I don't know any of us would be opposed to having a microchip. If we went from mine to microchip in the state of Alaska, that would be, I think that would be great. Okay. Increased production. It was one, ah, so in B, it speaks specifically of Moncho. Um, and I think we should strike that particular reference or add, you know, either generalize it, either say add at the end, you know, and similar kinds of developments or just generalize entirely by striking Moncho. I think there's always a risk when you build such a specific short-term project into a long-term planning document. Okay. Something uh, under fair policies, um, it speaks of a whole great bunch of things, um, taxation, uh, timelines, you know, permitting. But one thing that I thought specific to this community, oh, starting uh, certainly, I recognize it under the uh, Parnell administration, this devolution of state offices, personnel and activities down to Anchorage. 
Rick, do you have any further clarity on this? But uh, my note was return state mining offices and personnel to Fairbanks, just kind of a general statement. Um, I don't know that I have a specific comment. Um, the although, you know, we the new DGGS director. Uh, I don't think he's a Fairbanks resident. I don't believe that was a requirement of the job. It just was the location of the person from where he was hired. I could be wrong about that. The previous DGGS director is, is right. here, but he retired. I might have to reach out to Click for some other of our friends in the mining industry. Again, my recollection was it, it wasn't that very, very highest level the director, it was things like that. There was a permitting office that was here um, where you had a couple well, of people the, that were pretty responsive and then it got devolved down to Anchorage and was not so responsive. Yeah, I I don't know that it, to me, it's as, as much locational as it is just um, the ability of, uh, the functional ability of the department to um, complete its, its job and whether it's uh, enough personnel, filling the personnel, um, trained personnel um, that kind of attract retrain um, is is more the issue I I think because um, the department is has generally been funded in recent years it's just struggling uh, we, we continue to struggle to get out permits um, so sort of the routine permits that should be um, anyway that's so I, I'd have to think about that too Jomo I'm not sure that may be a little historic. Tell you what, I'll reach out to the gang over at the AMA, the, the local AMA. I mean, the Lord, the more um, pressing issues, I think, if you talk to the AMA folks, are going to be uh, um, kind of some of the mineral tenure split estate issues. Um, when you have uh, um, borough and state land and there's an interest in um, mining exploration uh, and the, the mining, of course, um, is the subsurface, but when the borough has the surface rights, and so this so-called split estate, um, and we begin to have land use conflicts, and we're sort of growing up as a borough because we're starting to uh, try to deal with um, responsible exploration and, and engaging with our communities and, um, you know, organized and productive fashion so i think that whole some of these local mining regulations both at a borough and state level or that would be something i'd call out in a sense for sure okay so we do, we do have like use uh d use land use planning tools to mitigate conflicts mm -hmm. top plan Encourage local state uh, consistent predictable timelines for project permitting. Okay, I'm gonna put I'm putting that note about split estate, and I'll reach back out to the AMA. Okay, and finally outreach. I mean, I thought again, I I'm I'm about to offer myself to the industry uh, to let them know that you know we will happily assist in uh, discussions that will again help help people better understand the value of mining and the potential value Alaska can have uh, for, for these minerals. Okay. And then finally, again, all right, so we're nearing the top of the hour. We'll just zip right through these. Okay, so again, on workforce development, look pretty straightforward stuff, you know, a curriculum. I thought it was great. Curriculum for the public schools, you know, FNSB school district. Um, UAF, Support Expanded Mining Geology Related Degree Programs, Clue that's UAF, uh, Vocational Training, they've got, uh, of course, there's the, uh, well, LEED is this Mining and Petroleum Training Service, but you've got Hutch, uh, Alaska MEP, Workforce Partner Doyon, UAF, Expand the Availability of Commercial Drivers Licenses, they've got DOT, Okay, well, again, well, thanks to you, Brittany, we'll, we'll restrain the urge. 
Uh, let's see, increase awareness of career opportunities. And again, it's, it's the good cast characters I've added at BBC. Domo, could you stop for a moment? Uh, that uh, driver's training is typically a private endeavor, is it not? Yes. Well, even driver's ed. I mean, I had to, you know, standard driver's ed. I, I had to, I didn't have to, but I uh, contracted with a private service. Who does provide that? Is that directly, maybe we should reach out to Ken Hall. Is that like directly through the logistics businesses? I know there's a driving training school down in Kenai. And part of the problem is the amount of time that people, the cost to send people down there and the amount of time they have to be down there and away from their families to get the training. So there is a driving training school um, recently, from our understanding, the logistics teams have been paying for the trainers to come up to the interior, um, and there was um, at least a desire to promote uh, an interior training school. Hmm. I'm going to smack us in here for now. Okay, interesting. Joma, what about the Teamsters Union? they got to have an apprenticeship program. I guess the question is, is there, are they running their school out of the Kenai? Maybe that's part of why folks go down to Kenai. Okay, we'll do follow up on that. Okay. But certainly with all the activity here and proposed to be here, sounds like a, that's a worthwhile enterprise. Increase awareness of career opportunities. Okay, got those folks. Thought maybe UAF, but okay. Um, let's see, increase production. Again, same note as far as Mancho, generalize, you know, universalize, or just add the note. I threw, I added FEDC, encourage public, you know, public outreach. You know, certainly we'll assist in that. When it came to uh, encourage state level agencies to create and follow consistent, predictable timelines. Um, oh, I put. FBX, but I think, oh, okay. Uh, oh, that's the uh, Alaska Miners Association, Fairbanks, Alaska Miners, and FEDC and support. Okay, and then again, reestablish and man the state office. I will check on that, Rick, to see if that's maybe stale. Okay, and then again, outreach, outreach, outreach. All right, guys, we are nine minutes from the top of the hour. Do we want to try to plunge through this uh, research section? The last two sections are uh, research and then workforce development. I'll tell you what, I'll just give you a quick preview of at least the notes that I had put in for both. Um, generally speaking, I thought, uh, yeah, everything in this document is good. Um, again, just tweaks. So an innovation, you know, inter, uh, interior Alaska as the as a renowned research hub. Okay. Didn't really have a lot of notes or comments on that. Really, it was just about making sure FEDC, if there were places that we thought we could help um, or should be helping, put us in. We've been major supporters of Quasi, and in fact, I just got asked to be on their uh, advisory group. For expansion. So I went ahead and added FEDC. In fact, that was I spent two days getting trained uh, for that. Was it last week, week before last, last week? Um, let's see. Other places I thought we could help. Again, research aimed at climate change, documentation, adaptation, carbon capture and storage. Again, we do have a little background on that here. Uh, research energy solutions, renewables. Okay, so I made sure we're there on that. Uh, military relevant research, cold weather testing, again, unmanned uh, aerial vehicles, okay, so FEDC and support. Uh, research, now so I left the biomedical to the biomedicists. Um, let's see, research and identify solutions for Alaska's unique housing needs. CCHRC, of course, is the ideal lead for that. Uh, FEDC and support, left fisheries to the coastals. Although it was fun being the fisheries committee aide for 15 minutes, learned a lot. 
uh, let's see, develop an Arctic Emergency Services Center, okay, UAF, lead, center ice, uh, we were already listed in support, that was great, uh, create dedicated community space for early innovators. Um, actually, the very first project I worked on when I got this job was trying to advance creation of an accelerator, um, a physical building um, where you would have lab space, office space, uh, demonstration space, uh, taking a small business, say, off of the university and giving them their first home. Uh, so we're happy to participate in that. I've still got the drawings. Um, let's see, established network of entrepreneurs and mentors. Of course, we're there, as well as, uh, let's see, expand networking. The one where I went ahead and just added us because there was no one there uh, was support greater community participation, diverse local hire in research efforts. Went ahead and added FEDC to help and support. Another one would be um, actively address the lack of diversity in the research field. Uh, and I added FEDC. We have um, very, we have good and growing connections uh, with our uh, Native Alaskan partners, uh, TCC join on uh, and leveraging those to, to make sure that, we're, you know, that, that everyone in the community is broadly included as much as possible and particularly where uh, they should be. And then finally, our workforce and development. There was a right at the very top under strategies and actions, support industry specific employment needs. They listed a whole range of things, but not oil and gas. And so I just went ahead and put that in as a note. So priority employment gaps uh, include educators, healthcare professionals, mine workers, oil and gas, telecommunications, utilities, agriculture, regional hospitality, construction, and aviation, particularly aviation, I would tell you, um, as far as a gap. Uh, but any, but again, I did add oil and gas. Utilities were highlighted. Hey, Jomo. Yes, ma'am. It's Tanya. I don't have anything against oil and gas, but just looking at the way that various financing sectors have been moving away. I mean, BP pivoted from being British Petroleum to just BP when my ex-husband worked for him 20 some years ago. So I would suggest instead of oil and gas, just make it more generic like energy, because it's inclusive of not just oil and gas, but um, hell, the new, um, heck, the nukes that come along. You know, I mean, it's it's got more options and a broader applicability. I like that. I like where your head's at. Okay. Anyone opposed? I am. This is solely. I oil and gas drives our economy in the state. It pays our budgets. Um, I don't disagree, I, Rick, but I think it's also looking at where we were 40 years ago, and this is supposed to be looking at where we're going to be 40 years from now. And so, making it energy is more relevant to where we're supposed to be going, not where we've been. So I, I wasn't debating you. I was responding to your comment, but happy to have an offline debate. Um, my point would be, um, I don't think our SEDS is going to last 40 years. Um, but I guess this is the research section, correct, Jomo? No, this is actually workforce development. And so I think, honestly, I think it's both. Um, this is. Yes, please. This is Happy. Kathy. Um, I concur with Rick. And actually, this section says implement over the next five years. And I think, uh, no, oil and gas will be part of Alaska over the next five years. And the need to um, have a, a qualified Alaska workforce is critical um, in this area, as well as other sectors. It's not to say it's not also other energy sectors, but um, it does look much different than a mature area versus the in a, you know the emerging sector in energy yeah um hey this is carl i gotta chime in um so if you go down to c you'll see c says oil and gas work for workforce plan so i think you're spot on the pipeline training center is a long-term 
and they're having a rough go right now finding uh, uh, apprenticeships to come in. So oil and gas isn't going to go away. As energy uh, becomes more, whatever you want to say, electrical, uh, there's still going to be a requirement for oil and gas. So no, I, I, uh, I support what Rick and Kathy say as well. Okay. All right, but I, well, and then this one started with gap. Again, I, I, think, I think it's both. Um, I'm, I'm perfectly happy with both. Again, I, I saw oil and gas as a, in a you know, essentially a glaring omission. Um, but I think, again, positioning our, our young people to, for jobs in emerging energy sectors, things like windmill tech, um, you know, working with things like hydroelectric, uh, solar, I think that's all viable as well. Um, I, I do wonder, you know, uh, again, solar panel installation tech. So I think it's both. Would we be opposed to, again, adding things for renewable and emerging technologies? I, I think having a section about that, Jomo, makes sense because uh, attracting the right people to advance some of these um, emerging technologies in the renewable area is essential to bring them into uh, usable for, you know, whether it's in larger communities at an economic, on an economic basis or uh, more rural applications, you got to have people and we're struggling in every industry, not just oil and gas, but I can just, I know that from kind of the energy side as well. So having something to call that out, I'm, I think that makes some sense. Okay. I just want to say thank you, Tanya, for your, for your comments. As I understood what you were saying was not at all in, in opposition to that, but, but really being realistic about what we and our, you know, I'm 50. So those that are 30, those that are 25, those that are 20, when they're looking at what they're being told the world is, we, we have to actually be realistic and, and be creative enough to, to allow them to direct some of this innovation. And it isn't gonna just be this, the way it's been. So thank you, Tanya, I appreciate your comments. All right, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, add that over to the side. Okay, so that we've got it all there. We, we, we have a, a wonderful team at Agnew Beck to try to sort out all of our citizen comments. Okay. And then the other one was, okay, so there was remove number three, oh, and we're right at the top of the hour, so we're, but we're almost done here. Um, remove barriers to employment. I just felt like it was very heavily military leaning, which is not a bad thing, um, but we wanna remove barriers to employment for everybody. Um, and so the only note I have is universalize or add a lettered section for non-military licensees. Again, we want to help the nurse who's moved to the community, uh, you know, with his wife because she's active duty to be able to get to work if he's properly licensed and certified. But we would want that same nurse to be able to get into the field expeditiously, whether he was a military spouse or not. Is that fair enough? Any objection to that? So again, I like the focus, particularly as we work very hard, I have worked very hard here at FEDC relative to service member employment along with general quality of life. Um, again, it's we want every everyone who wants to be in a, a productive Alaskan to be able to be a productive Alaskan. Okay. So I will add the note, you see we're down here in the strategy section. I will add the note again. Let me see if I can pull this off. Okay, regarding uh, renewable or emerging, renewable and emerging technologies. Okay. As we looked at things like educational foundations, uh, advocate for increased K through 12 education funding. Uh, we're not alone in supporting this. Uh, there's probably a, a whole bunch more who, who do and should. Um, expand early childhood programs. We personally see it as a, well, yeah, FEDC and that as well. 
I will tell you just as a, a general statement, uh, child care is, has long been recognized coast to coast as uh, a challenge and something that, that needs to be worked out. Um, yeah, and I, every one of us who's been a parent knows it. Okay, and those were the biggies. And then of course, when it came to removing barriers to employment, I just again added that final note of, um, you know, again, this was fairly military heavy. So either, you know, generalize it, you know, just find some way of accommodating recognition of those who are not military affiliated. Okay. And then finally, there was a, a kind of a catch-all section um, that include a whole bunch of stuff uh, that had not gotten, well, wasn't specifically highlighted, things like transportation, environment, housing, land use, and transportation. I think I've said that twice. Okay, so and I did for, have- um, Jomo, just, it's not just a catch-all. Those have very um, high-level active planning in progress. And so more to point and reference rather than develop something that may conflict with those larger planning efforts. Ah, okay. okay. Thank you for saying that, Brittany. I appreciate that. You know. Okay. Well, I'm just going to zip through again. I, we're, we're past the top of the hour, but we're so close. If everyone doesn't mind, I'm just going to zip right through what I had put down at least. Right at the top when it came to a construct appropriate housing, solid section. The only thing I added was conduct housing needs assessments in S and plans for uh, annual updates uh, because there may be specific plans. It might be, maybe it can all go into one big housing plan. It may need uh, to be broken up into bites. When I, especially when I think about things like senior housing, uh, income challenge housing, uh, among others. I'm going to just interrupt right there. See that 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 there in 10 years will not be the way those questions are framed. I mean, they're they're within gerontology and aging. This is a field I've been in for 20 years within municipal planning and so forth. These conversations and Brittany, you can speak for it. You know, our, our, Alaska is what it is. We have our economy the way it is. We have our population the way it's been. But if we're looking at how we're going to organize an aging population, given all the things that are happening with energy in the full spectrum of what that means, this process that we're undergoing here also has to evolve. We have to find a way to allow ourselves to ask these questions and face these ways in a new way that isn't just senior housing and disability services. Those ways of framing how we are as a community are no longer as relevant as what all of our jobs and our mortgages and our expectations and careers have told us is what the way the expectations were going to continue to be. I don't have the answer, but trying to be compassionate and present through the process of trying to take this process seriously because more people than us need us to and how we can help each other help this pro process and this progress be deployed in a sense. I absolutely want that better for military families or for minors or people driving cab or for school teachers for anybody because it's a very dynamic process and we are all worthy and able to participate in some way. Thank you. Got it. Oh, you're totally right. Um, again, a lot of this, hmm. doing deep dives on things that need deep dives while not falling into the trap of siloing, recognizing that uh, these things are all interconnected. And that's why I am proud of the interdisciplinary studies, interdisciplinary learning degree that I got at UAS. <laughs> Thank you very much. Right on. Okay. Okay. Well, unless someone really objects, I'm leaving the S. All right. <laughs> Mike. Yeah, just a quick question for Rick and perhaps someone else may know. I heard or read that uh, Last week, a contract was signed for a major solar development at Eielson. Uh, can you, does anybody have any insight into that? How, how large is that? And uh, I understand it's uh, uh, expected to produce a fairly large percentage of their uh, electric power. Anyone know?
I knew that that was in the works. I hadn't heard that it had gotten signed and I don't know the volume. Um, when I was reached out about it, my questions were revolving whether it was on um, some of the older housing or the new housing units. And I never got an answer on that one, but uh, that's the extent of my knowledge on it. Too bad we don't have Luke Lawrence on here. Something tells me he would have some insights. I thought maybe Golden Valley Board of Directors might have some insight. No. Okay. Well, we're just going to go ahead and we're going to have to, uh, well, not set it aside, but let me go check on that. Mike. Thanks for the heads up. Okay. I want to say the only other section where I made a comment was review land use policies. Uh, let's see. Review FNSB land use policies to ensure they are responsive to industry and community needs. Uh, establish priorities to protect farmland, policies compatible with uh, evolving telecommunications, creative strategies to incentivize cleanup instead of just relying on penalties. So a carrot to go along with the stick. Consider establishing redevelopment incentives um, downtown. And I went ahead and put uh, Fairbanks downtown and other designated areas. Because it's not a, a well, the, there's, we have actually a couple of downtowns at a minimum here in the community, both Fairbanks and North Pole. And other areas that are outside of downtowns uh, that I think are personally you know, ripe for redevelopment. Uh, yeah, and I, I won't name names as I often do. All right, everybody, well, that brought us down and now the computer's gotten glitchy uh, with all the changes. So I'm just gonna go ahead and save. Well, thanks a million, everybody. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, finalize this. If you have any more comments, I don't think, um, I'm actually gonna be out of town next week, so we won't have a meeting. Um, if you have anything further as we've gone through this, that, you know, again, the brain juices are flowing, uh, the ideas are flowing as well. If you want to go ahead and email me um, things that you think we should consider adding, please do. Um, I think what we end up may do, well, may end up doing is I'll try to find a way to ping the group uh, if any major changes or requests for changes come in. Um, otherwise, uh, we'll just consider this kind of closed, kind of done for the day. But know that again, you can always go to the FNSB website to make further comments or recommendations. Uh, or you can email Brittany, um, or you can email uh, Ms. Shelley Wade over at AgriVet, all of which you can find on the FNSB website on the FNSB. I want to say it's actually here in the chat box. So yes, FNSBCEDS.com. Thank you, Ms. Klupas. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for moving through this process with me. I really appreciate it. Again, no meeting next week, uh, but do continue to go through the SEDS. Know that you have until June 10th, which is Friday of next week to get in your comments. And, and, and please do let your, uh, your bosses or your friends know as well. This is our community action document. All right, everybody. Thanks a million. Have a great rest of your day. And uh, yeah, happy almost June.